JD here, and as you can see, we are back on F1 22 once again. And in today's video, we are actually going to attempt the latest F1 esports qualifier for the F1 23 series. And you can see as we're trying to load in the leaderboard here, the game decides to not want to show us. And yeah, that's an absolute great, great start. But basically the crux of this event is that you just simply need to win the race. It's a bit of a controversial one because it's trying to reenact the Hamilton and Verstappen Abu Dhabi from a couple of seasons back. With that very, very controversial last lap. So yeah, fair play for them trying to spice it up a bit. And you can see, starting off with my typical Abu Dhabi setup that I've used in a time trial, but obviously with the lower pressures. And yeah, you're only just driving two laps for this event. And you can see here, every time you restart, you have to stay behind the safety car. And it takes about 30 seconds for you to actually start, which is uh, what Codemasters do best. They love to frustrate the players <laughs> of the game. But in this video, we're really just going to be discussing the level of F1 esports and just the level of competition in general is just absolutely insane as we are really getting to love these curbs on this game absolutely love it but yeah I used to be if you didn't know an F1 esports driver myself back in 2018 I actually qualified through the Xbox platform you had to get in the top 10 which is the same here now and the standard has just, it's just ridiculous how much it's gone up. And you know, even the likes of Thomas Runha, who I would say is the fastest driver on this game right now at a fairly comfortable distance. Like in this event, I think he's got almost half a second on anyone else, which you know, if you want to watch his run, then make sure to check out his channel. Just looks absolutely effortless. Doesn't look like he's even driving fast. It just... And that's a compliment because I think when you are driving your best and the fastest, you do have to be as most efficient as possible with the inputs and it will look effortless. But even I think on last game, I did a few races against him like online and actually managed to get the better of him. So just the rate that people are improving, people like Jake Benham as well, used to race with in the past, managed to beat him on a few occasions in a championship. Now, these drivers have been around for a while, but... Just the level of improvement is just crazy. And for me personally, although I haven't really been playing this game anywhere near as much recently as I would have done in the past, it's not really an excuse on my side. I feel like I'm still driving at a pretty similar level to almost my best. Now, maybe not quite the peak, but definitely not far away from it. As you can see, these are a couple of attempts for my runs, but we did a 26.5 faster sap the next app but yeah i don't even feel i'm driving like, that far away from my absolute maximum and just the rate of other people's improvement is it's actually quite scary and if you want to get into the f1 esports now then it's almost like you have to quit your nine to five job in order to make it happen because the dedication the time and just the precision of driving has just gone up exponentially but this is actually my fastest run now and as you start the run something's a bit annoying it actually downshifts to second gear so make sure you're very much aware of that and crossing the line we do a 9-0 a 2 minute 08.8 was actually my fastest so you really want to try and maximize that and another thing with this which is quite similar with other f1 esport qualifier events you do have to be quite fortunate with the ai and Although this was one of my faster runs, here I'm just trying to actually encourage the AI to go down my inside because if they don't go down the inside and they come out quite close behind you, as you saw in previous clips, they just overtake you. And then once they overtake you, there is pretty much no way to re-overtake them. And that is kind of an annoying thing with these qualifying events with the AI. I know a few of you in the comments before said that, well, no, they should have the AI because that's you know, just got to deal with it and deal with the racecraft and stuff. But the problem is sometimes that even when you've done a much faster first lap, they're actually closer to you. When sometimes you've done a slower first lap, they're actually then further away. And 
it's really crucial that you get out of their DRS zone because if they're within a second as you cross this last lap, for someone of my level right now as well, then it's going to be very, very difficult to stay ahead of them. So on this first lap, you just want to maximize this ERS as much as you possibly can. And going across on here is actually a 26.8. So about three tenths away from my PB. And you can see we've got a little bit wide into here. So definitely could be going quite a bit faster in this run. I'd say in total, there's probably maybe five to seven tenths in total. I reckon in the the entire run itself. But you can see even though we've had a slower second lap, the AI are much further away, and that's just simply down to if they decide to battle each other or not. So you need to be quite fortunate. It's not always about just your raw pace. You could be the fastest raw pace, but if you don't get fortunate with the AI, then it's going to really, really cost you. But you need to use all that battery on that first lap. Otherwise, you don't get that bonus of the fastest lap. So if I did a 26.5, and then even my last lap was you know, four times slower than what I did in this one, my score would actually be much, much higher. So that's why sometimes you see some people who have a actual slower time are ahead of the people on the leaderboard who someone behind them might even have a faster total time. It's simply down to their fastest lap bonus. But you can see going through here, you can see how much car science has actually uh, caught up. So that's why it's really important to be well over a second ahead coming to this last lap because this is against 110 AI coming around this last corner. This last lap was pretty good, apart from the turn one. Coming across the line, it's 27.6. But if you compare that to someone like Thomas Ronha, I think his first lap was like a 25.5. And then his like final lap was like in the 26s. That's like a good second and a bit. And for me, I just I don't even know where that time is. Obviously, there is a bit in the setup, quite a bit in the talent. But for me, I feel like I'm driving actually quite well. And yeah, it's just nuts. It's not just him, but just other people. Just the level is just absolutely crazy. And you can see we did a 90 minute 01.5. Thomas Bonner has done a 59.58. So he's about two and a bit seconds faster in total. So not a million miles away, as you can see by his leaderboard here. But the level is just... It is just absolutely ridiculous. But I will post down the setup I used in the description or as a pinned comment because you do need to be using higher downforce here, especially since you are on the harder tyres, which are very warm. So low downforce definitely isn't the way to go. But please like the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the support on the channel. And I'll be catching you very, very soon. Peace.